Now today we are going to start over here a new chapter and that is nothing but circle. Now first of all, before starting circle, you should know some basic concept of a circle from the reference of 9 standard. No doubt, in case of 9 standard only, you have completed the basic theorem, structure and the part. Moving to the next concept. Here today we are going to start chapter number 3 that is a circle over here. Now basically it contains some fundamental application that we have to understand and just for a drawing and saving a time, I am going to use my concept over here to draw a circle. First of all, what is the fundamental part? Take a little consideration of a circle. Here I want to draw first a diagram over here for a circle. Now one by one, basically this circle contains some fundamental application. In that case first, circle is a diagram where there is a particular point called as a center and from this center your distance up to circumference up to circumference is equal. Means the first definition is let us say circle with center O. So it contains the basic part which is over here. First for a circle, basic part that is center. And here center I am denoted as O. After the center, the second and the main fundamental part is nothing but radius. So I am going to draw one part over here as OP over here and I am going to call it radius R. You can draw OP, OQ, OR, OS, n number of radius you can draw over here. For example, I have drawn one radius that is OP. So your second point that is nothing but radius. So radius is OP. Remember, symbolically it is always indicated by R. Symbolically, radius is always indicated by R and generally we indicate it by small r. It depends upon the numerical. If there are one circle, generally we are indicated small r. If there are two circles, then capital R, small r, depend upon your structure. So radius, that is OP, R over here. Now, next concept. Here, what is mean by radius? A line joining center of a circle and any point on circumference of circle is called as a radius. After radius, I am going to introduce second definition over here and that is nothing but diameter. Now what exactly mean by diameter? Here, I have drawn another line. Now, speciality of this line compared to this, here you are joining center of a circle and any point on circumference of circle. But now, here you can get two points which touches the circumference of circle and also passes through center of circle. I am going to indicate it as a AB. Now here, you can call this AB as diameter of a circle. You can call AB as a diameter of a circle. So the next concept over here, that is called as a diameter. Diameter, here this diameter is diameter AB. So, AB and it is indicated as D. Here, sometimes we can indicate it by capital D, sometimes we are indicating in small d. But generally, we are indicating it by small d over there. And speciality is that this diameter is 2 times radius. Now why it is 2 times radius? Because you can say O to A, O to A is 1 radius and O to B 1 radius and it is a straight line. Therefore, diameter is nothing but 2 times of radius. These are the fundamental definition in circle. First definition center. Center means is a point which is called as a origin and a distance from center O up to OA, OP, OB all are equal and that is called as a radius of that circle. So the first center to next radius and that is indicated by R. Next diameter. Line joining two point on circumference of circle and which line passes through center of a circle that is called as a diameter. Here diameter is A. Definitely as per your diagram diameter is going to be changed maybe P, Q, S, T depend upon your part and it is always two time radius. Now the next concept is called as circumference. So the next concept is Circumference. Now, circumference is generally indicated by capital C. This is fixed story here. This capital C or circumference means what? If I am going to start from point P, which is a point on circumference of circle, and this entire curved distance, this entire curved distance, if it is get converted into straight line, then what is the limit of this curved distance? And according to formula, it is given as 2 pi r. Remember, 
circumference of circle is always 2 pi r 2 pi r remember this pi is nothing but greek word over there which is getting introduced and its value is always constant this pi is in numerical you can take 22 by 7 or 3.14 means here value of pi is 22 by 7 or if you make a division of 22 by 7 that value is 3.14 generally up to 2 decimal we are taking it actually this value is 3.14152789 like that rate is increasing up to round number 29 digit but up to 2 decimal we are taking that is 3.14 and one by one once again apart over here circumference that is indicated as a c and that is equal to 2 pi r where r is the radius of that circle means if in this circle radius is 5 cm then I will write 5 over here if radius of a circle is 9 cm then I have to write 9 over there in that way your calculations are going to get modified after circumference the main basic concept in case of a definition and the last part is area of circle that definition is area of circle and the part is Now, area of a circle. Area of a circle means nothing but this is the respective circle. In case of a triangle, formula is half into base into height. In case of a rectangle, we are using the concept length into breadth. Now, circle having a formula and again this formula is expressed in terms of pi. That is why this value of pi, that is 22 by 7 or 3.14, is the most important. And formula for area of circle having a radius r, that is pi r square again pi r square where pi is nothing but 22 by 7 and r is the respective radius of that circle once again student take a slight revision on all concept first radius of a circle is r next diameter of a circle is 2 times radius means diameter d is equal to 2 into r third circumference that is nothing but Curvature distance when converted into straight line, what is the length of circumference? Logically, you can say length of circumference. And that is a formula indicated by capital C and that is 2 pi r. Next, value of pi that we are taking into calculation. In numerical, we are taking 22 by 7 or 3.14. It depends upon the values where we are taking into application. And final, area of a circle is pi r square. And these are called as basic formula. These are called as basic formula of a circle and last area of a circle is pi r square next in the part there are also some additional content like called secant tangent that we are going to see it but first observe it carefully now addition to that we have to understand some of the basic concept for that part i have drawn two circles over here so that i can explain step by step concept over here and now in this part we have to understand some concept among them first is called as chord of a circle, second secant of a circle, third tangent of a circle and fourth application of that and one by one we are going to start a part over here. Among them the first concept is called as tangent for a circle, first concept is called as a tangent for a circle. What is exactly meant by tangent of a circle? It is nothing but a line which is outside the circle, I repeat which is outside the circle and touches the circle in one and only one point. For example, if I want to draw a line over here and one by one concept O is the center of a circle, O is the center of a circle and AB is a line. AB is one line. Now what is this line AB? It touches circle in one and only one point. Let us say I am going to call it as a point P. Then in that case, if any line, if any line touches the circle in one and only one point, then that line is called as tangent to circle. Means here you can see line AB is tangent to a circle of center O. Or you can see line AB is tangent Now, what are the properties of a tangent? Let's have a small revision. No doubt you are completely in line. But step by step I am going to introduce over here. Let us say O is the center, AB is a tangent at point P. And if I want to draw a radius at P, means what? Here, I have taken a significance such that OP is a radius. So, OP is a radius indicated as a R 
and AB is a tangent. And for both radius OP and tangent AB have a common point that is C. This angle is always 90 degree. Angle between radius and tangent at common point at common point is always 90 degree. Means you can say that angle OPB or OPA is always 90 degree. So I am writing one of the angle OPB is equal to 90 degree. And that is the main concept over here. In book, they have given a statement angle between radius and tangent is 90 degree. And true that. Such a kind of theorems are over there. And you must know that part. Angle between radius and tangent is always 90 degree. Now, we have completed all the basic significant. And now, from tangent, we are moving to the next property. And that next property is considered as a chord. So, we are introducing the property called as a chord. Now in case of a chord, what is exactly mean by chord? Here, a line which touches circle in two different points. I repeat, a line which touches the circle in two different points is called as chord of that circle. Let us say now I am going to call center over here as a P. Remember, every time now I am going to put O as over here. Every time they may be your center A, B, P, Q, depend upon the part. There are some significant, just we are not giving the name x and y because we are giving the name to x is. Let us say I have drawn one chord over here. And the name of this chord here I am going to it as an A. Now what is exactly this line? This line touches the circle in two different points. This line touches the circle in two different points called as chord of circle. So naturally AB is a chord of a circle having a center key. So here we are indicating chord A. Means, according to that part, it is very clear. Chord is one segment, chord is one segment or a line which touches the circle in two different points. Now, it may be smaller, it may be larger. But for a larger, there is one condition. What is exactly that? If a line passes through center of a circle, if a line passes through a center of a circle, then it is called as largest chord, nothing but diameter. Let us say I am going to drop over here. I have drawn another chord in front of you. Now, what is the speciality of this chord? What is the speciality of this chord? Speciality of this chord is it passes through a center of a circle. It passes through center of a circle. Let us say I am going to call it as a MA. Now, MA having a two nomenclature. You can call MA as chord MA. Also, you can call it as a diameter MA. Why? Because it passes through center of a circle. Means there is a statement, diameter is the largest chord of that circle. I repeat, diameter is the largest chord of the circle. Means MA, you can also call it as chord MA. Or also you can see diameter MA. Remember, for radius you can smallly written as RAD. For diameter you can have DIA. But for chord, you have to write the total name over there. For tangent also, you have short form, that TGT. These are the short form which is used in your textbook also, that you can use it. But again coming over here, chord is the largest segment or diameter is the largest segment in terms of a chord of that circle. And this is the basic of tangents and chords over here. Hello student, continuation with the part of a lecture. Now, Step by step, we are understanding a pair of concepts over here. In this case, I have introduced a new concept that is non touching circle and intersecting circle. Now, what is exactly that? Let us say this is the first circle having a radius 3 cm. This is a circle having a radius 3.5 cm. So, let us say first circle having a center P and second circle having a center Q. Now, these are the two different circles and circle with center P and circle with center Q they does not touches each other. There is a complete gap between them. Such a circles are called as non-touching circles. There are few numerical which is based on some part and maybe distance between the center, tangency distance. These types are numerical based on that part. Similarly, there is a part of a non-touching circle and there is also one part called as intersecting circles. Now here, I am trying to keep the same name nomenclature like P and Q. Now I have drawn two circles over here. First circle having a center P. Second circle having a center Q. 
as this is a different diagram, so I can use the nomenclature over here. Here you can see that these two circles intersect each other in two different points, first point, second point. Just to indicate the part, here point A and point B. So remember, if there are two circles intersect each other, then there may be first part, that is these two circles intersect each other in two different points. I repeat, in two different points. One is point A and second is point B. Let us say first circle having a radius 5 cm and second circle is a smaller, radius is 4 cm. That is, you should know the indication of part. In numerical, in such a type, you can indicate first circle with radius R1 and for second circle, you can indicate the radius as R2. I repeat, first circle having a radius R1 and second circle having a radius R2. And you should know that R1 is the radius of first circle, R2 is the radius of second circle and both are now different. But both the circles intersect each other in point A and B. Means in intersecting circle, radius may be same, may be different. And such a type of numerical is already included in your syllabus. Hello friends, now continuation in the part. We have to understand the next concept that is called as internally touching circles and externally touching circles. Let me clear over here. I have just taken a two circle in your textbook. There are also three circles, numerical is also over there. First, external touching circle. Let us say circle having first its center is P and for second circle its center is Q over here. Now, according to this diagram, as per this condition, Here, let's say both circle touches each other externally, both circle touches each other externally and their common point of intersection is A. I am just taking some of longer distance so that you can easily understand the point. Now P to A because this point is A. P to A is a point. First, A is a common point of contact of first circle as well as second circle. So P A is nothing but radius of first circle. As per diagram, you can see that it is larger or greater. So I am going to divide it by R1. Next, I am going to connect the second circle center in the form of radius. Again, QA is also radius of second circle. I am going to divide it by R2. Now remember, P to A, this is your R1, and P to Q to A, this is R2. Remember one by one some rules. What is exactly that? First, Line joining the center of two circles when they are externally touching, there is a straight line passes from them. Means point B, point A, and point Q. All three points must be collinear. So one by one point is here. Total distance PQ, total distance PQ is indicated as why? Because P and Q when passes from common point A, then they are on straight line. Means you can say P dash P dash Q is a straight line. And distance between the center of a circle when they are externally touching, it is indicated as PA plus QA. So it become distance PA plus distance QA. And in this case, you simply say that distance PA is the radius of first circle R1, QA is the radius of second circle R2, and then answer become R1 plus R. You can indicate this distance as per centimeter, meter, depend upon its unit. And remember student, when two circles touches each other externally, when two circles touches each other externally, then there is a line which is passes through the center of circle, most passes through common point and it is always straight line. After external touching circle, the distance between the center is nothing but radius of addition, means R1 plus R2. It is nothing but distance between the center is addition of radius. Exactly somehow reverse condition is happening when you are going to take internally touching circles. Again, I am going to keep the same part. Let us say here is a P, which is center of outer circle. And there is another point Q having a center, which is the center of smaller circle. I repeat, P is the center of larger circle and Q is the center of smaller circle. Here, I am going to indicate the part, try to understand. Let us say PA is a radius, that is R1. 
Next, for smaller circle, radius is R2. P is the center of larger circle. Q is the center of a smaller circle. P to this point is the radius of first circle R1. R2 is radius of smaller circle. And A is the common point of a contact. A is the common point of a contact. Then remember, again, line joining the center of circle, line joining the center of circle must pass through their common point. Means, here you can see the point. If I have joined a line passes from P to Q, it straight away go and touches to the point A. Now we have to find the main point, distance PQ. What is meant by distance PQ? It is the distance between the two centers. So the point is, distance PQ is equal. Now, as we are interested to find the distance between the two centers of a circle, you have to make radius of first circle means PA minus QA. That is the to radius of second circle. So I am going to write distance P A. Distance P to A means radius of first circle or larger circle. Distance Q A means radius of second circle. So you have to make minus distance Q A. And in this way, if you want to do the part, P A minus Q A, that is P Q. And here, this answer comes as R1 minus R2. So student, remember one concept very carefully. When two touches circle internally, when two circle touches internally, then distance between the center, distance between the center is nothing but subtraction of radius or a difference between the radius. Vice versa, when two circle touches externally, when two circle touches externally, then center distance between the two circles or central distance between the two circles is nothing but addition of radius that is R1 plus R2 and the main part is that when you want to join a line touching circle when you want to join the line touching the center of a circle then it must touches the common point it must touches the common point you can say center P, center Q and common point of contact A is on same straight line center P, center Q and common point of touching A must be on same straight line and that is the basic concept of internally touching circle as well as externally touching circle. Hello friends, now we are introducing again some additional concept over here and in that case tangent two circles from point means what? Try to understand this concept over here. Let us say I am going to indicate O is the center of a circle, O is the center of a circle and now first angle if point is inside the circle, you cannot draw a tangent to a circle. If point is inside the circle, you cannot draw a tangent. There are only two possible possibilities, first and second. What is that? First condition, point on circumference. What does it indicate? Let us say I have drawn one point called P and this point P is lying on circumference of circle. Then what is the condition of a tangency? If there is only one point, then a tangent which is passes from that point, we can draw only one tangent. And this tangent is like this. So you can see that I have drawn one line L. Let us say indicating it as a L. This line L is tangent to a circle at point P when that point P is on circumference of circle. So you can draw one and only one tangent when point is on circumference of circle. Now second condition, if point is not on circumference but outside the circle, means point outside the circle, means what? Again I am going to take the same structure over here. Let us say O is the center of a circle and somehow point B. This point P is outside the circle. Remember, if point is inside, then we cannot draw a tangent. If point is on circumference of circle, we can draw only one tangent. But if point P is outside the circle, in that case, you can draw two tangent to same circle. You can draw two tangent to same circle. Means, if point P is outside the circle, having a center O, then from this point P, you can draw two tangent to same circle. 
and the tentative diagram of the tangent sum. Here, from this diagram, you can see that PA is one tangent and PB is another tangent. And specialty is that specialty is that both the tangents are always congruent. Means here, tangent PA is congruent with tangent PB. Actually, this is a proof in your syllabus. Just as a basic part, I am taking a slant revision. Here, first part: if point P is outside a circle, if if point P is outside a circle, then we can draw two tangents to same circle. That is the first condition. And second, both the tangents are congruent or equal in length. Means you can see tangent P is congruent with tangent P. And these are all basic concepts over here. Now, student, you are kindly requested to read the theorem which is available before three point one. So in the next lecture, we can complete the part of basic and move to your regular syllabus. Hello, students. There are some additional property that is required over here, and you should know before the lecture. First, if this point P having line L at a tangent, and if you are going to draw a radius, as previously explained in my part, this angle between the radius and this tangent, remember it is always 90 degree. No doubt there is one proof which is available in your syllabus and definitely in the next lecture we are going to see it. Similar type of part is also available over here. What is exactly that? O is the center of a circle, P is a point outside the circle. I have drawn two tangent P A and P B. And if I am going to draw a radius, means I have drawn a radius O A. I have drawn a radius O A. Remember again this is O A is a radius. And AP or PA is a tangent, so this angle is already 90 degree. It's always 90 degree. Just radius tangent angle is a 90. In a similar manner, radius and tangent is angle 90 degree. In the same part, if this PB is a tangent, and if I am going to write OB as a radius, again this angle is a 90 degree. Next, and the part is. Yeah, radius OA equal to radius OB. So don't forget, radius of a circles are always congruent. Radius of a circles are always congruent. And you should know all these basic concepts when you are going to start a topic called circle. Hello friends, I am your ASP sir. If you are watching our video and you are liking this video, then subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon below. And also share these videos in your groups and friends. Thank you very much.